Hello and welcome to another video in the Learning Height Field series. So today we'll be having a look at the Height Field Erode node. So um, yeah, what I have set up here is a just a basic terrain setup with a noise and two uh, distortion passes and then a Height Field Erode node. And right off the bat, it doesn't do much besides applying a bit of color over it. Um, but when you start pulling your frame slider, which I, by the way, set to a maximum of 24 because I didn't want to do 20, 240 frames of simulation. So if I start pulling this slider, <coughs> this will probably take a bit longer on your computer because I already cached it out. But as you can see, it starts to erode the terrain. And well, that kind of, it, it's given away in the name. Um, it does erosion. So in here, there's a lot of options. Um, just the tabs are just plenty, so to say. But in this, I'll mainly go over the erosion, precipitation, precipitation, Jesus, uh, simulation, and visualization. So I guess I'll start off with a visualization. So what this is is it basically adds a bit of looks to your terrain. So. Um, it probably will start off like this, so this max elevation will be set to 1 or something like it, and you'll get this very weird look. Um, so what you want to do is you want to hit Compute Range, and it'll compute the range of your height field. Now, a thing I personally always do is this minimum elevation is never set correctly. So I just basically subtract 2 from it, uh, which puts us to minus 1 probably, or a bit higher. Um, so basically now it's... Yeah, so now you don't have this white spot here, which comes from the top here, and it, it basically loops. So in here, you can just adjust your colors. So let's say I want the, the ground to be a bit more blue. I don't know why I would want that, but yeah, you can do that. A bit some, add some different colors in here. Kind of change your color ramp. So yeah, that's what you can do in here. Um, this can also be very useful for indicating your the output from your um, height field erosion. So if I start pulling this slider, you can see that this stuff is being created. So this blue and this, this brown stuff, that's the water and erosion, or debris. So I can change this debris to a kind of bright pink and this kind of green, which is what I usually do, so I can really clearly see where the erosion is happening. Because sometimes uh, when you're height fields get really big or when you're using very specific settings on your uh, erode, it can become hard to see where your erosion happens. So I always just set them to fluorescent neon colors. Uh, first of all, because it can look pretty interesting. So this can create some very interesting looks, but also because it'll, yeah, it'll just help you see what is going on. So that moves us on to the first section in the erosion. So we got our amount and noise and max debris depth. So what do those do? Well, the uh, amount is basically a multiplier for the rest of these erosion methods. So this node provides two erosion methods, hydro and thermal. And if you up this amount slider, so let me just put it to five to really get a, an extreme here, it is going to erode it a lot more. So as you can see, compare this to the one. And let's get to the simulations tab. So if I press this reset simulation, it's going to resim with the new settings. So there you go. And as you can see, this is a lot different with one um, multiplier, so a multiplier of one, than the multiplier of five, which will basically just erode your terrain away nearly completely. So yeah, that's what that does. Um, the noise slider will decrease it slightly, so if I increase this to a lot, reset the simulation, you can see that it just looks slightly different. Um, yeah, you can get a more, yeah, so it just scatters it a bit. Um, I usually read these tooltips because I don't exactly know what everything does, but by just reading these you can get a good idea of what it kind of does. Um, yeah, it's just to add some natural looks to it. Because without this, so if I put this to zero and reset the simulation, it'll look very flat and very consistent, so to say, uh, which doesn't always happen in nature. 
So then we get to the max debris depth, which is um, kind of influenced by the bedrock layer. So yeah, it's it's kind of weird. So if you put this to a max, so if you put this to a max and hit simulate, it's not going to change too much. Only if you put it to zero, you can kind of see the effect a tiny bit if you're lucky. Yeah, oh yeah, zero, it does do a lot, right? So basically what it does is it's a multiplier of how deep the erosion can go. So if I put this to 0.1, you're gonna get a tiny bit of erosion. Yeah, so here you go. But from what I found is that usually one is the maximum. Uh, if you go anything above that, it won't add too much. So here we're back to our normal result. Um, then we get to the hydro tab. So I actually made a different setup for this. Let's move our slide back to one. And here we go. So the hydro section, so I, here I disabled the thermal. So the amount of thermal erosion, I put to zero. And once I start pulling the slider, you can see that it looks very similar to the previous result. Only a lot of that noise that was cluttering the rest of it is gone. And that's because the hydro just cares about water. So these streams coming down, this is something you might see in other mountain ranges in real life. You get these streams coming together, forming these lakes at the bottom. Um, that's what hydro does. It's basically, you take the amount, multiply it with the hydro, and that's how much uh, water erosion you're gonna get. So if I put this to a really low amount, and I reset the simulation, you're gonna get a lot less. So that's what I also show in here. No, I change the dissolution rate. So when I change this, you see everything disappears. And basically that has to do with the precipitation tab, precipitation. Um, it kind of removes the water. Or it, it, it um, no wait, that's a different one. That's, that's for uh, later. Basically the dissolution rate will affect how much um, soil is taken in by the water and taken downstream. So the lower this goes, the more you're gonna have left behind. So the more these are gonna, there's gonna be like debris around here. So as you can see, a lot of it is being left behind. And if you hover over it, that's exactly what it does. Um, so the more, the lower this value is, the more water erosion you're gonna get, or at least the more debris is gonna be left behind. And that moves us to the thermal, um, which is very similar to the hydro. Oh, put that at 24. Um, yeah, this is what it does. So as you can see, it creates these kind of, yeah, these, these spots almost. There's no, there's probably, there's of course a pattern to it, but it's lost a lot less discernible than the hydro erosion. Um, and you can see this as wind erosion. So here I put it at one, and you can see that basically these, these, these corners and, um, peaks are basically kind of getting shaved off by this. So if I put this lower, you're gonna see that these peaks and kind of valleys and corners are appearing once again. Um, and the wind removal rate is kind of similar to the dissolution rate in that it basically um, kind of dictates how much of the debris, remo debris is removed. So if I put this to zero and the thermal feature size to 100, you're gonna get a lot of erosion. And the thermal feature size is basically how much, how large your uh, erosion is. So if I put this at one, again, reset the simulation, you're gonna get a lot less erosion. And if I put this at 10, which is the default, you're gonna get a decent amount. And then we get the wind removal rate. So if I put this all the way at one, all this brown is gonna disappear. Yeah, so basically the erosion is still kind of going to be there. Yeah, we're getting a lot of these um, these blue spots, and I'll get over that in the precipitation tab. Um, but yeah, the wind removal rate just dictates how much of the debris is removed. Yeah, so without further ado, let's actually go to the precipitation. So I called it hydro here by accident, but yeah, we're looking at the precipitation tab and you can see I increased it by uh, to by one so to two if we revert this to defaults it is five oh, actually lowered it 
So what this tab does is it'll just add water. So if you put this all the way to zero, you're going to get a lot less water. So this affects the hydro simulation part because it'll just add a bunch of water to, you, to the simulation. Putting this all the way to 100 and hitting that reset simulation. Basically, you, those little blue spots you saw before, that was the precipitation. So the higher your precipitation is, the more water is going to gather around the whole thing. And the hydro simulation is going to basically take that water and use it to well, make these kind of river-like structures. Um, and then we have a bunch of options for density and evaporation rate. So if we make the density higher, you're going to see larger shapes. So as you can see, a couple of these rivers just merged together. And the opposite goes for if you make this smaller, which will result in um, smaller rivers and a lot more detail. Now, something of note is that this density is highly affected by your resolution. So here I have a rather low resolution on my height field, so I'm not going to get a lot of detail. Uh, but if you were to up it by a lot and add a lot of den very little density, you're going to get a lot of detail in there. The evaporation rate is basically kind of similar to the um, wind removal. So wind removal will remove debris, and evaporation rate will remove the water. So if I up this to, say, 2, and reset the simulation, yeah, you can see a lot of this water just got removed. Um, and the higher you put this, the more water is going to be removed every frame. And as long as this is lower than the amount of precipitation, you're going to be fine. But the moment you put it in an equal amount, some interesting stuff is going to happen. Yeah, so there's going to be no water and there's no way any water will appear. Because the water is created at the same time as it is removed. So if I do this, you're going to get these very faint streaks of water that are much more concentrated. So only if it, the water is very concentrated will it remain. So this is basically a way to control how concentrated your water is in a way. Uh, then we have all this spread iteration, spread rate smooth iterations. And this is uh, just some more controls over how your water is affected. So um, I'll let you play around with this because these are a lot of options that are just a lot to get through in these videos. So I'll let you just play around with these and see what you can get. Um, then before moving on to bedrock, let's move on to debris. So this tab is very similar to precipitation and that will decide how much debris there is in your scene. So if you put down on a road, a height field road, um, you can see that by default the debris is put at 0.5. Um, you put it in here, it's, I just upped it to 1 to kind of get a very extreme effect. Um, yeah, so the higher you put this, the more debris is going to be put in your scene. So if you put this back to 0.5, kind of re-sim it, you're going to get sim similar results to what we had before. But the more debris you put in there, just the more you're going to clog up the simulation, so to say. So yeah, this is kind of the result of adding a lot of debris. And yeah, that's that. Again, these types of settings, uh, the repose angle, I suppose, is worth going over. So if we lower this, um, you're going to kind of stretch it out a bit. Yeah, so you're going to, it's going to be going at lower angles. So these are actually physically based. So every um, material has a repose angle. And that basically means that if you throw a bunch of it on top of each other, you're going to get very similar shapes, these kind of cone shapes. And that is because of the repose angle. So the higher this repose angle is, the higher you can stack it. So here you're going to see that because I put the repose angle really high, the material can stack on top of itself much more than just kind of roll down the hill. So that's what repose angle is. And this spread rate and iterations is just basically ways to control how much um, your, your debris is going to flow around in one iteration, in one frame. 
which gets us to the final thing we're going to discuss in this video, which is bedrock. So bedrock is a very good way to control what parts of your geometry are going to get um, dissolved into this, um, this puddle of debris. So if we put this at 1, reset the simulation, wait for a bit, there you go. So this is how it is by default. And the moment we start lowering these values, you're basically controlling at what point the um, erodibility becomes none. So what I did here is I said, okay, at the deepest point of this depth, which is how deep the bedrock goes, you're going to get bedrock. So after two meters, I think this is meters, um, you're basically going to get no uh, erosion. And if I put this whole thing to zero, we're going to just basically remove um, simulation at all. So yeah, this is a very good way to control how much certain spaces are eroded. So you can make these ramps, uh, kind of increase it, to basically control how much certain spaces are eroded. So um, yeah, there's a bunch of other options like layers where you can basically control what gets added to the final result, bindings where you can control what the names are of every layer, uh, these two we went over. So yeah, that's it. Um, there will be a bonus video about the mask by object uh, node, which I sadly forgot in my previous masking videos. But that'll be it for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.